This is Chicago's Morning Answer with Dan Proft and Amy Jacobson on AM560, The Answer. Good morning, Dan and Amy. You're familiar with our recurring Campus Beat segment. Well, that's the segment where we keep you apprised of what's happening in higher education and more and more so at the grade school and high school level, too. Uh, things like uh, Texas Tech University Workshop, where uh, trans- individuals who are transitioning to another gender identification can work with speech pathologists on campus to uh, improve their vocal presentation to make it more consistent with the gender they're choosing. So they're going to ta- start talking like this. Yeah. They're going to be Jim. Well, exactly. Instead of talking like this, if they're Sally. You <laughs> could be a guest lecturer at Texas Tech to the Red Raiders for that. Uh, we tell you stories about Yale University. The uh, Great Strides Yale is making when it comes to the presence of an emotional support animals on campus for their undergrads. Why 14, are you looking at me Fourteen at support animals? 14x increase uh, in the last year on campus at Yale. Uh, support hedgehogs, dogs, and the like. Any insects? Any goats? Miniature horses? Much more liberal is their policy when it comes to pets, uh, emotional support animals, than, say, United Airlines. So, so be they, happy to know. Okay. So they can bring their support animals into lecture hall with them, right? Yeah, yeah. I think so. There's some Actually, of the, the emotional support animals can audit classes there too. <laughs> Get tenure, um, and uh, of course, we talked yesterday. Uh, our very own U of I here, uh, the push by the graduate student union to have STEM workers, right? So the yeah. sun, your scientists, your engineers refuse to be employed by defense contractors to strike a blow against the military industrial complex why would you want to hurt your own country well uh, there's a lot no of sense to me there's a lot of questions uh, about what's happening on college campuses that defy common sense so we need to bring in an expert and uh we've done so with our next guest heather mcdonald who's a senior fellow at the manhattan institute you of course know her among other things from her bestseller war on cops she's got a new book coming out the diversity delusion how race and gender pandering corrupt the university and undermine our culture heather thanks for joining us again appreciate it well thanks so much for having me on dan and amy it's always a pleasure and uh just uh building off of our our reference to uh, illinois and uh, stem graduates there uh, Peace in City Journal about uh, the STEM fields and uh, diversity being elevated over, you know, proficiency in science, technology, engineering, and the like, and um, how that harms sciences. Uh, explain. Well, the diversity crusade has already torpedoed the humanities, the social sciences, and it's about to destroy America's uh, massive advantage in science. The assumption is is that. Uh, if a scientific lab does not have a 50-50 representation of males and females, the only possible reason for that can be discrimination and sexism. The federal government is putting enormous pressure on scientific laboratories to hire scientists by not just by gender but by race. Uh, merit no longer counts, and the universities are quite eager to go along with this idea. Uh, medical schools have massive racial preferences for the students that they admit. Black students are admitted with uh, MCATs. These are the standardized medical, t- uh, you know, SAT-type scores test to get into medical school. Black students are admitted with the lowest tier of MCAT scores that would be mostly an automatic reject for white and Asian students. And those type of preferences continue throughout the residency uh, and the National Institutes of Health put enormous pressure on uh, labs that are working on finding a cure for cancer, say, or Alzheimer's disease that if they don't have a sufficient number of 
so-called underrepresented minorities working in their uh, on their cancer grants, uh, they won't get them renewed. So this is an absolute insanity. Uh, it, it ignores the fact that there are different distributions of interests and of skills across different populations. The expectation that absent bias, we'd have absolute proportional representation of genders or, or different uh, ethnic groups is preposterous, but it is going to set us way back and destroy things that are absolutely essential to human thriving. Well, it also goes only one direction. As we know from the data, uh, the majority of uh, BAs and advanced degrees in virtually every field ex except some of the STEM fields are uh, earned by women. So why is there not the concern that men are falling behind when women are uh, earning 60% uh, of uh, those degrees? Excellent point. And it's amazing. They're continue those facts are absolutely true. Uh, and say in and and in a few uh, STEM fields like gynecology, females are now about 82 percent of all gynecology residents and ob obstetricians. Again, nobody complains about that. And yet, despite that fact, and and men, you know, God bless them, they continue to excel at the very highest reaches of mathematical reasoning and physics, but. When it comes to average skills, they are falling behind. And yet, if you look at every single big liberal foundation, as well as the federal government, spending our taxpayer dollars, there is this obsession about promoting females. You can, if, if you're a male, forget it. You're not going to get you know, a, a government-funded summer science program. You're not going to get help in coding skills. Instead, we've got all these girls who code, uh, Latinas, science programs, as if, uh, you know, the females are still being discriminated against. I don't know about you, Amy, but I have never been discriminated against in my life. I was in college a few years after my college went co-ed. Mm -hmm. If ever there would have been a time when there might have been discrimination against females, Maybe it would have been then. Never happened. I've had enormous support from every professor I've ever had. I know I've been the so-called beneficiary of gender preferences all my life, being on panels, whatever, because the poor, hounded, harassed organizers feel like they damn well better put on, uh, have female representation. The idea that, that females are living in a world of discrimination against them today is just preposterous. Oh, it's fake news. I mean, but when, when did this whole diversity mania, when did this begin? Like, how did, what was the genesis of this? How did it start? Well, it began in the 1960s with uh, pressure, the federal government uh, feeling like we needed to do more for civil rights. And certainly, you know, this country has a very deplorable, shameful history of, of the most vicious discrimination against blacks. Uh, and fortunately, in the 60s, we started passing federal laws to say this is no longer acceptable. We are going to transform this country. We did, uh, but Lyndon Johnson came up with the idea that it's not enough to simply remove barriers, you had to have affirmative action uh, to try and engineer racial equality, when that meant simply making sure that employers were not discriminating against blacks, doing outreach that was equal-handed, that's fine. But, but that idea immediately morphed into the idea of racial quotas. It, it be, there were legal rulings from the Supreme Court that said that any type of job qualification, however neutral in intent, such as asking for a high school degree uh, to, to, to work a machine that required knowledge, say, of reading, uh, if that neutral job qualification had a disparate impact on blacks because blacks had 
few were, were had fewer high school degrees, you had to throw it out, and and you started having demands for uh, preferences, and females then hijacked that and said, well, we want preferences too, and now you have the assumption and the universities, to get back to our, our theme, they are the main drivers of this idea that any lack of, of equal representation in any field, whether it's journalism, history, or a oncology lab, is bound to be uh, the product of discrimination as opposed to, again, different skills, different interests. So what do you think the end game is here or the way back from the precipice if, if we're not over the edge? Um, Amy Wax, a Penn law professor, suggests that basically – you need to just shut down the Ivy League schools and start over. They're beyond salvaging. Uh, Brian Kaplan at George Mason University has written a provocative book. We've had him on the show called Against Education, where he basically, you know, takes the, uh, well, to borrow a Timothy Learyism, uh, you know, uh, drop out uh, approach to higher education um, that you, in the in the uh, era of technology and uh, ubiquity of uh, practicums like. Um, this heterodox academy that's being started or the Khan Academy, some of these other things, forget the traditional four-year university, which is just a totalitarian re-education center. What, what, what do you see as the future of higher ed, the college campus? Well, I, I have nothing but contempt for the current state of higher education. I, I beg any alumnus not to give money to his school unless you have done complete due diligence and made sure that there, it is still teaching, if it ever did for the last 40, 50 years, the classics of civilization, the, the high points of thought, creation of beauty uh, without a political ax to grind. And if it, if it is engaged in this diversity nonsense, please do not give money. Um, but the what I and I, I think maybe we do need homeschooling for for college. It's not enough to homeschool your kids in K through eight. You say you guys are starting to cover what's happening in elementary and high schools, rightly so. I mean the the trans crusade stripping children of, of their innocence, of their fortunate ignorance about matters sexual is starting earlier and earlier. Uh to, to try and brainwash these kids with premature knowledge of sexuality, but, but we need homeschooling for college. On the other hand, I don't agree with Kaplan. I think that he, as I read him, he takes a very disparaging attitude of the humanities generally. Yeah. I think it would be a big, big loss for our society if there was not a place that we could somehow recreate and recover where people would be able to lose themselves in beauty and greatness, uh, and and the university has stood for that. Um, there, there is you know, such a place. It's called Hillsdale College. Well, I was just teaching there for ten days, and it was really a a relief. Uh, to you, I kept waiting that I I turn the corner and I'd come across the gender studies center, <laughs> and it never happened. <laughs> It, it was really a, a, a just an extraordinarily shocking experience that there still is a place that, where they're not, you know, in an ordinary college. Every other word out of the president's mouth at this point, whether it's Yale or or Georgia State, is diversity, 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 racism, 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 and that's not what you hear at Hillsdale. One of the last outposts of Western civilization. That's right. She is Heather McDonald, Manhattan Institute senior fellow author of the bestseller War on Cops, her new book, forthcoming, The Diversity Delusion, How Race and Gender Pandering Corrupt the University and Undermine Our Culture. Heather, thanks as always for joining us. Appreciate it. Thank you so much, Dan and Amy. I appreciate it. Thank you. And she joined us on our turnkey.pro answer.